Welcome to Windows 11 Untouch. So this is my Surface Book 3. You saw me on dock this. And I'm running, running Windows 11, which was an update through the Windows Insider program. Ran pretty quickly and smooth, but I wanted to show you some of the uh, functionality of Windows 11 via Touch. So I'm gonna kind of zoom in a little bit closer, get as tight as possible to this device. So we have, of course, our center dock right here. Now we can change this, but I'm gonna just keep it here for now. Uh, and this is a beta, so some things may not work too well. So the very first thing, of course, is you can see your Windows icon, shows you your pinned applications right there. Uh, and then you've got your search, which is uh, kind of showing your recent apps as well as your search, so you can actually go ahead and search. This is where the keyboard comes into play. So if I tap on that, that brings up the keyboard. And I have the keyboard on the side, or I can have it sent to me out. I do prefer the floating keyboard, it allows me to move it around the screen quite effectively and it works out pretty well. Plus you can swipe on this keyboard so you can go office and boom, there you have it. So this keyboard is truly nice, also has emojis and it has GIFs, so solid all, all around. Now your next button here is your desktop button which gives you the multiple apps that you have open and your specific desktop. So I have my gaming desktop, which is strictly gaming. You can see Master Chief there. I've got my main desktop here, and I can go ahead and create a third desktop. So as I've created it, I can press and hold. If I press and hold, just give me the options to choose the background and rename. So I'm gonna rename this one. Let's call it, Again, this keyboard is pretty cool. So let's call this uh, test video. Boom, right? So we've done that, and then we can go ahead and change that background, choose a background specific specifically for this desktop. And you know what, I'm gonna put this other Master Chief helmet, and boom, there we go. So we've got that, and we can cycle through our different specific desktops as we choose. Now here, We've got, of course, our, um, our new sidebar, if you will. This is like your, your news and information bar, which you can bring up and close by tapping the button, or you can swipe from the right, left to right. That brings that up. And it's actually pretty nice. So you don't have to swipe back. You can swipe, or you can just tap on screen, and it disappears. You can also swipe from the right, and that brings up your notifications as well as your calendar here, which is nice. Now, after that, of course, we've got Edge browser, we've got Chrome, which I do have on here. I'm just gonna close, I'm just gonna minimize Chrome down. Um, we've got uh, Xbox, we've got our file explorer, and then we've got the store as well, mail, and then some other pin apps. You can continue to pin apps as much as you want and it will begin to look like Windows. Again, you tap on the corner of your screen and that should minimize everything as well. So that's nice. Couple of things to note, on this kind of notification area on the lower right hand corner, uh, you do, when you tap this, this brings up this nice area where you've got quick access to your uh, Wi Fi network, Bluetooth if connected, airplane mode, battery. It's much cleaner altogether. You've got your volume rocker here, and you've also you've got your brightness rocker. So I can easily manage this uh, by, by simply bringing up this menu. And of course, my keyboard is next to that. And then I've got, of course, those quick running applications there. So that is the very first thing you notice surface-wise on Windows 11. Again, it runs pretty well. It feels like Windows 10 with upgrades, but there's some more things to it that you can actually uh, do. So um, let's do the, the multiple screen layout. So for instance, you open up an application like uh, Let's take, uh, let's take uh, Edge here. Now, with your, uh, if you have a mouse and keyboard, you can just basically hover over the center icon here and make multiple windows. The easier way to do it on touch is to press and hold down here, actually uh, grab it down here and snap to the side. And that will create these four quadrant bubbles for you on touch. That's the way it does it in touch. And the first quadrant here, I go, okay, what should I put here? I'm gonna put the Xbox store. It populates the next one. I will put, say, my file explorer. And then here, you know what? I will put 
Chrome. So I now have a four quadrant layout of all the applications I'm using all in touch. Very simple, very easy. And you know, I can go ahead and basically either tap each one to minimize it, or I can of course kill everything from the edge if I can get there. And it's very simple and very easy to use. So nice layout overall. I'm gonna switch now over to say my gaming desktop. And I'm gonna basically do a video of gaming on Windows 11, so stay tuned on that. This would be on the Surface, uh, this would be on the Surface Book 3, so at least there's some performance there. With our device docked, the way to actually set up the multi-screen uh, is a bit different. We can hover over applications uh, that are, of course, Windows 11 applications, or at least updated. And you've got this option to basically have multiple um, you know desktop layouts that you can pick from so you can switch to something that's a four quadrant you can do this larger smaller you can do um, you know three quadrant setup here which is what I just did and say we go into uh, the file explorer we can do side by side and then we change that there um, so there's a couple of ways you can do it or again you can still go ahead and snap to the corner and then you can select where you want to put either application. So I've got a three quadrant as well. So very nice, very different way of actually doing things. All right, so let's take a look at settings menu with touch on Windows 11. So settings is actually pinned here uh, on your Windows start menu. Something that is at least beneficial. Tap, you get into the settings. Now the settings menu feels a little bit different. Looks like they are uh, it's a little bit more better animated, much smoother. Also, the icons look a little bit more visible and a better representation than your traditional Windows uh, look. So you can go into this, things like your display. Uh, you've got brightness, all that fun stuff. Okay, head back. Uh, you've got sound, notifications, actually setting those up. So there are a bunch of menus here for Windows. Your power and battery, which is really important, especially for Devices like this shows my power right now, 23%, battery levels, better indication. I do like what they're showing, showing here, so it's pretty nice. Uh, screen sleep, all that fun stuff. Uh, and then you can go into your storage, check out your storage amounts, what you're using for storage. Again, you can see it's not that smooth just because this is still a beta. This is the very first one. Activation, multitasking, and tasks switching. Some of the shortcuts you can use. Then we go to Bluetooth and devices, shows it's paired with the Xbox controller. Again, better icons, looks more visually uh, appealing, if, if I may say. Uh, then you've got your network settings. And it shows I'm connected to Thunder Network. Uh, some other options, a mobile hotspot if I need to, if this device supports it. Personalizations, of course, which you can go you can go into theming uh, and also the colors, dark mode, those kind of things. Now, dark mode is represented here, how I got it, but it was simply by searching and it takes you right to dark mode. Your apps, your default apps, the accounts, uh, time and language, gaming, Xbox game bar captures and game mode. Now, game mode is optimizing your PC uh, for the best gaming experience. So that is something that I think um, a lot of people would will definitely uh, appreciate. And then you've got your accessibility, and then you've got your privacy, and then Windows updates. Now Windows updates here, you also uh, have it just styled a little bit better. You have your pause and play. So you can pause updates now. You can also check your update history and the advanced options, which allow you to uh, get into deeper details for your updates, keep me updates, download and media connections, those kind of things. And then of course there's a Windsider, Windows Insider program which I'm part of and anyone can join that allows you to go ahead and get those updates on a timely fashion. So let me change screens, head back to something much brighter here. I think overall the functionality of Windows 11 really is solid. I do like it. I think a lot of people will, will find it quite useful, especially with devices such as this where touch is touch enabled and you're going to be using um, you know, the screen quite a bit. My favorite feature, honestly, is the keyboard right now. I like the way it works. I like the swipe works with it. I also like the 
uh, the, the multitasking uh, operations here on device and device now where it makes it really fast to snap to either corner of the screen and then you can basically start placing applications wherever you want to in whatever fashion you wish. So that to me is pretty awesome. So anyway, guys, if you have any questions, any comments about Windows 11 on uh, touch or of course a uh, laptop or two in one or anything with a touch screen, let me know. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and always enjoy entertainment.